Never have I stated such incisively that the overt, reverberating raucousness of sedulous students could hamper my judicious library silence. What does it mean? Well, <laughs> some random students misbehaved in the library. <laughs> Developing vocabulary is essential in learning a language. In this video, I would like to help you how to learn vocabulary better, faster, and with creative methods. My name is Lukasz and this is The English Residence. As it is a vocabulary practice, I would like to invite you to the sitting room of The English Residence. So, follow me please. <laughs> So, the background didn't change, but pay no attention to that. A scientific research has proven that if you want to learn vocabulary faster, uh, you should create a, some sort of a connection with the native language that you already know very well. On that base, uh, I have created a, my own strategy that I would like to share with you today. Here is my secret of learning long vocabulary lists in five easy steps. Step number one. Start with a good dictionary. If your level of English is B2 or higher, you should definitely start using a monolingual dictionary, so English to English. Why? Because some words in your native language can have a slightly different meaning. For example, in Polish we have um, a castle, so it is zamek. However, the Polish equivalent of this word, zamek, a castle, can also mean uh, a zip and uh, a lock. An English-English dictionary will always tell you a difference. Furthermore, make me some ice cream in Polish is considered to be as extremely offensive um, because of some sexual contexts. Languages are amazing, aren't they? So don't risk an incomprehension and uh, look the word up in a dictionary, monolingual dictionary. Personally, I use uh, Cambridge, English English, uh, online dictionary, which is faster. For this video, let's pick a word, a poll. This is a picture from Cambridge dictionary online. As you can see, it is excellent because it shows you everything about this word. We have a word, a poll, we have here its function in a sentence. It is a verb, so something that we do. And here is its pronunciation. Extremely important. This little guy here shows you the stress. The stress doesn't mean that the word is stressed. No. <laughs> it means that we say the syllable stronger. A pole. A pole. And a knot. Apple because it sounds like uh, a fruit. Here is its definition. To make someone have strong feelings of shock or of disapproval. And then you have an extremely important thing, which is an example. Here you can find out how the words are combined together with this particular word. I was appalled at or by the lack of stuff in the hospital. So, we have just found something new about this word. Step number two, create a connection. Now you should find an association with your new word uh, and combine it with your native language. Make an association uh, vulgar, brutal, uh, scary or funny or just stupid. The more creative, the better. And actually, you can have a lot of ways to do that the connection by how the word is written. You can find a word that looks similar to another word in your native language. For example, let's pick nosy. The word nosy looks identical to the word nosy, which means uh, a nose, but plural, noses. You can create a story about a lady named Karen who put her nose into her neighbor's bathroom in order to spy on their deodorant preferences. And the neighbors were so angry at her that they shut the window and uh, Karen's nose fell apart. <laughs> and that's why nosy means that somebody is 
way too interested in somebody else's affairs. Well, this story is inappropriate and of course impossible, well, probably. But still, it is creative and easy to remember. Of course, there are many words that are in no way similar to your native language words. And in that case, you just have to split a word in two or maybe in three and create a story out of them. For example, let's have this word appall. 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 App. All. App. All. App. Al. Al. Like a name. An application for old gentleman named Al, which farted so badly and so loud that the walls started shaking. And there was a doctor uh, with the name Al uh, who was kicked out of the hospital because he started farting so loud that the walls started shaking. The patients were appalled at uh, Dr. Al's behavior. So the patients were shocked and disapproved of the doctor. <sighs> Again, weird. Impossible, but, uh, well, impossible? <laughs> Weird, but easy to remember. That's the point. Of course, keep in mind that you should create a story with a word, its meaning, and also its pronunciation. It's important because the word appall is pronounced appall, appall, and not apple, apple, okay? Don't hesitate to exaggerate the pronunciation. You can even make it longer, because the more creative, the better. Another strategy of creating connections is uh, the connection by how the word is said. For example, in Polish, a pole, a pole, a pole, pole, sounds like uh, a pola, 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 which is an abbreviation of a beautiful Polish name, Apolonia. Let's create a story out of it. There was a girl named Pola who had a very interesting hobby of burning fields in Poland. Of course, it is shocking and we disapprove of this behavior. Gdzie Polonia? Pola? Oh, trwoga. A Pola poli Pola. Znowu. I apologize to all with this name, forgive me. Remember that the word should already exist in your native language and be commonly used. If you create a brand new name for the sake of your story, you will probably forget it easier than in comparison to a name that already exists and is commonly used. And the third strategy is the connection by creating a story from the letters. Okay, Elise was a very nice and a shy girl. But secretly, she had a very weird obsession of collecting ladders. Every time she saw a ladder, she had to steal it. She had many consultations with a famous psychologist, uh, and finally, she wanted to test her strength in practice. So, Elise went to a shop to buy a paper towel uh, and she was trying so hard not to steal any ladders. Unfortunately, Elise picked papers and ladders. The psychologist was appalled at her. Shock and disapproval. Afin de prouver que les méthodes si déçues fonctionnent, Je voudrais vous présenter euh, une histoire. Mon ami apprenait l'espagnol et il m'a raconté euh, son association avec un mot euh, et descansar. Descansar? Descansar? Euh, désolé pour euh, mon espagnol. <rire> descansar? Je ne sais pas. Oh <rire> son histoire était si stupide et si vulgaire que moi, je l'ai mémorisé immédiatement. Même après tant d'années, je me souviens encore que Descansar s'est euh, reposé. L'histoire est tellement vulgaire que je ne pourrais pas vous les raconter parce que euh, YouTube euh, 
euh, me bloquerai. <rire> Mais encore une fois, c'était extrêmement facile à mémoriser. Si vous avez essayé, euh, ne pouvez pas euh, trouver une association avec un mot, euh, vous pouvez euh, apprendre un mot par cœur et cela fonctionnera toujours avec une stratégie suivante. Ok, alors euh, maintenant en anglais. Uh, step number three. Oh, it's so difficult to now to, to speak English now after, after speaking French. Okay, but step number three, use it. Now you know what the word means, you know its pronunciation, and you have learned some examples of the word in sentences. You created a funny, weird, vulgar story to remember it uh, easily, or you have just learned the word by heart. Now let's use it. There are many creative ways to use a new learned word. Draw it. Try to draw a situation and put a word inside. Maybe create a meme or a comic book with all the words that you have learned. Write a story or a sentence with the word. Don't hesitate to exaggerate your new golden knowledge. Say it in a conversation. While talking, seek for an opportunity to use the word in practice. Uh, so, for example, uh, on my lessons, I create situations in which my students can actually use a new learned word in practice. Teach it. If you can explain something easily, it will be memorized easily. Next time, explain the meaning of a new learned word to your English-speaking friends. Set it as a wallpaper. Well, we are like our phones thousands of times a day. Well, maybe not thousands, but a lot. <laughs> Imagine that you write a word and set it as a wallpaper. So every time you unlock your phone, you could actually revise the word. Simple, sometimes frustrating, especially if you want to check your notifications quickly, but still it works. Unfortunately, this method only works with uh, one word. So uh, maybe use this method as a last resort for the words that are impossible to connect with your native language or uh, are very difficult to create a story with. Listen and watch. Listen to podcasts and watch TV series with subtitles or not and try to catch the word. If it appears and you catch it, that's a win. Read. Read books in English and who knows, maybe on the second page there will be this word. Rewrite it. And the method that doesn't necessarily work with me uh, is to just uh, write a word down many times. But I know a person who finds this method uh, quite useful. <laughs> Copyright. I can't sing songs because I will be demonetized. <laughs> Step four. Let's have a break. Step 4 is very easy, just have a one-week break. It is necessary for you to make sure that you memorize the word in a long-term memory and not in a short-term memory. Step number 5. Revision time! Now we need to go back and revise the vocabulary list. And of course, I found so many ways to do that. Simply cover the definition of a word and its examples and uh, say, what was that? Ask someone to revise with you. Look at the drawing or a story that you have created with the word and uh, try to guess all its components. Have a look at playphrase.me. Is it called like that? Playphrase.me, yes. <laughs> you will have uh, the link in the description. It's a brilliant website in which you just type a word and then the website will automatically search a scene from a film with that particular word. How cool is that? Create a test for you with theteacherscorner.net. The link is in the description. You can find a wonderful way to create a revision test for you. This video is not sponsored. So if anyone wanted to recognize me, well, that would be appreciated, thank you. Uh, but please don't sue me. I, I just want to share the websites that I find wonderful 
and useful to learn with. I to by było na tyle. Z tą metodą nauczyłem się ostatnio około 150 słówek, tak mi się wydaje, 150 słówek. I ostatnia porada specjalnie dla Was, jak znajdować nowe słówka. No więc ja uwielbiam oglądać dobre seriale, to jest słowo klucz dobre. I wtedy po prostu możecie oglądać, włączyć jakiś serial z napisami lub bez i mieć swojego smartfona przy ręku, przy ręce, przy rękach, przy sobie. Kiedy pojawi się nowe słówko, po prostu wpiszcie je do swojego notatnika w smartfonie i kiedy będziecie mieć już listę jakichś 50 słówek, po prostu skopiujcie całą listę i wklejcie ją do komputera i potem łatwo przetłumaczcie i wydrukujcie. Ja tak robię, to jest super metoda, uwielbiam ją i chciałbym ją Wam polecić. Właściwie tak będąc z Wami szczerym, to wolę bardziej oglądać seriale i wyszukiwać nowe słówka, niż czytać książkę i podkreślać każde nowe słówko. Dlatego, że to jest trochę frustrujące, że trzeba przerywać czytanie i wyszukiwać słówko, albo zapisywać je i podkreślać. I właściwie, kiedy wypożyczycie jakąś książkę po angielsku z biblioteki, zobaczycie, że pierwsze kilka lub kilkanaście stron jest pozaznaczona ołówkiem, ale na przykład w połowie książki już nie ma nic. To znaczy, że e, czytelnicy wyszukują nowe słówka, ale potem nudzą się tą metodą. A znów z drugiej strony i oglądanie seriali i zapisywanie słówek do smartfona na bieżąco sprawia, że nie będziecie musieli się w ogóle odrywać od tej przyjemności. Ready, steady i nie trzeba nic przepisywać. Zaraz mi się wyładuje kamerka. And here we go. This is my strategy of learning vocabulary. I hope you liked it. I hope that you are inspired. But whether you are inspired or not, I would like to wish you a lovely day. Thank you for watching and as always, subscribe. <laughs>